Good morning, and welcome to the liturgy. Let us begin together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we come together as a community of faith, let us pause to consider the times in our lives when we have sinned against one another and let us ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. And we ask this in your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Grief stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs, I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments. So you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the paths of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to hear these insults. On the same day at Egbatana in Midia, it so happened that Regel's daughter Sarah also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands but the wicked demon Asmodus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you've had no joy with any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours? The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into an upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus, what I caused my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. 
It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die, so that I need no longer to hear such insults. At that time, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes so that he might see God's sunlight, and to marry Regal's daughter Sarah to Tobit's son Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Asmodeus from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks. <clears throat> To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading taken from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, you have not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush, about how God told him, I am the Lord of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living, and are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as we look here in our gospel reading today, we hear about all of the 
deaths and all of the wives and all of the marriages. And we wonder, what's going on in this gospel reading? I guess we would like to look only at Scripture, and Scripture will tell us that death is not the end. Death is the beginning. And we have to look forward to a heavenly banquet with God in heaven. That's what we need to understand. That's what we need to comprehend. That's what we need to go forward in our knowledge that heaven is what we are looking for ourselves. Just like all of these people in our gospel reading today, they died and then they went to the netherworld, whether it be heaven or hell, either way, they are going to be looked after by God. They are going to be God's chosen people. So all of this is very important for us to understand and keep as a part of our daily lives. Let us please stand for the prayers of the faithful. With hopeful hearts, we offer our prayers to our merciful Lord, that the power of the living God may inspire and strengthen all who preach and teach in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who hold public office may be guided by the Holy Spirit to use their power and authority to bear the fruits of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord that the Lord may comfort and counsel those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit may open the minds and hearts of this faith community to God's will in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, and especially we remember Rachel Schopp, John Burke, Stephanie, and Stanley Gosnick, and for any people within our lives, among our friends or among our relatives who've died recently, let us pray to the Lord. And for all of our own personal private intentions this morning. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in your mercy, hear the petitions we offer this day. We pray in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I'll be right back. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. I have used you this water. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become 
our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. And we ask this in your name, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 my God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, 
with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop and Cardinal, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should turn to my room. I will only say the word of my soul.
Let us pray. Pour in us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. And we ask this in your name through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Let us all go in the peace, joy, and love of our Lord. Thanks be to God.